Lesson 22, we will compare the size of a product to the size of the factors. So we know that when we're talking about multiplication, that factor times factor equals product. So that's what we're referring to when we say the, the size of the product versus the size of the factors. Let's go ahead and get started. A asks us to solve for the unknown. We're going to rewrite each phrase as a multiplication sentence, and we're going to circle the scaling factor, and we're going to put a box around the number of meters. Let's go ahead and look at this. It says one-third as long as six meters is equal to what? What we know is one-third as long as six meters. So we know that's equal to six times three. Excuse me, that's equal to one times six over three which is equal to six thirds and six divided by three is equal to two. That's going to be two meters. Now let's go back to the directions. We're scaling one third of, that's going to be our scaling factor and we're going to put a box around the six meters. All right, so now for B. B says six times as long as one third. Same thing here. Now we have 6 times 1 over 3, which is equal to 6 over 3, and that's equal to 2. Our answer is 2 meters. All right. Now for the second part, it asks us to draw a tape diagram to model each situation in problem 1 and describe what happened to the number of meters when it was multiplied by the scaling factor. So let's take a look at it. So we had A was one-third as long as six meters. So this is six meters. Let me retry that. Let's try that over. Oops. That's my six meters. And we split it into thirds. So this right here is my two, to represents my one third of six meters. All right, so the scaling factor is less than one So the number of meters will decrease. So the number of meters decrease. It went from six meters to two meters because since our first factor, remember factor times factor equals product, since our first factor was less than one, we know 1 times 6 would equal 6. Since this first factor was less than 1, our product is going to be less than 6. So the amount of meters went down. It decreased. Let's take a look at B here. So we had B was 6 times. So we had 6. We need 5 lines to give us 6. One in the middle and two on each side should give us one, two, three, four, five, six. We know we had six times one third, so this is equal to one third, which would mean this is equal to one third, this is equal to one third, this is equal to one third, also one third, and also one third. Three thirds plus three thirds equals six thirds. So now, in this case, and we didn't do this up here, but let's go ahead and do that. We're going to circle our scaling factor and put a box around our number of meters, right? So in this case, the scaling factor is less, excuse me,
is greater than one. So now the number of meters increased. And in this case, it increased from one third to two because we were talking about six times one third. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next problem here. So for this problem, they're asking us to do something that should be familiar. We did this in class and ask us to fill in the blanks with a numerator or a denominator to make the number sentence true. So we have five times blank thirds is greater than five. So because we know that this five and five are equal, this has to be greater than one. If it was one, then five times one would be equal to five. But they're saying that this over here, my expression has to be greater than five. So with that being said, we know that this fraction is going to have to be greater than one. And in this case, you can have anything that is greater than one, meaning greater than a whole number of one. So it would be three over three would equal one. So we can put any number or any digits in, in the numerator that's greater than three. So you can have four thirds times five will give us something that's greater than one. Let's see if that's true. Four times five equals 20 divided by three. Well, we know that 20 divided by three, if we skip count by three, we say three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21 is too much. So that's going to be 18 will be six. We already know that that's greater than five. It will be six and to my subtraction, 20 minus 18. It's going to give me two. It's going to be six and two thirds. So we know that that is true with four there. So in order for this, for B to be true, we have six blanks. We don't have our unit or our denominators. Times 12 is less than 12. So in order for this to be less than 12, this fraction would have to be less than one. So we know six over six would be one. And 1 times 12 will be equal to 12. So to make it less than 12, we would have to have our numerator it's going to be less than our denominator. So we can put anything in our denominator that's greater than 6, in this case 7. And that would be true. Now we can say, well, in order for this to be true, 4 times what equals 4? If we said 4 times what equals 4, hopefully everybody can tell me one is the answer that goes there. In this case, we have to come up with a fraction form that equals one. We already have five in our denominator, so we're going to put five in our numerator. And if you wanted to test these two out, we could say six times 12 divided by seven. We know six times 12 is what? 72 divided by seven. Well, let's see. 72 divided by 7 is going to be 1. 7 goes into uh, 7 times 7 is 1. Subtract 0. 7 goes into, that's a 0. 7 goes into 2, 0 times. So we have 0, and that's in 2 sevenths. 10 and 2 sevenths is less than 12. Here we have 5 times 4 divided by 5, or 4 times 5, in this case, divided by 5 is equal to 20 divided by 5, and 20 divided by 5 is equal to 4. All right. So it says, look at the inequalities. These are inequalities. They're not equal, so they're inequalities in each box. Choose the right fraction, excuse me, choose a single fraction to write in all three blanks that will make the all three number sentences true. Explain how you know. So we're looking for one single fraction that will make them all true. In this case, we can look here and say 
Well, in order to find a fraction that would make this sentence true, we know that it would have to be greater than one because two thirds times one is equal to two thirds. Anything less than one is going to give us something that's less than two thirds. So let's go ahead and say 10 fifths. So 2 times 10 is 20, and 3 times 5 is 15. This is an improper fraction, which means that it's greater than 1. Therefore, it's going to be greater than 2 thirds. All right, same thing. Let's put our 10 fifths here. So 10 fifths times 4, or 4 times 10 fifths, is greater than 4, because it's greater than 1. And last but not least, we can do the same thing. 10 fifths times 5 thirds is equal to 50 fifteenths, which is greater than 1. So it's going to be greater than 5 thirds. Oops, excuse me. Let's check, because that's an improper fraction. We have to double check that. Let's uh, see here. So we know that if we skip count by 15s, how many 15s can we get out of that? We say 15. 30, 45, we can get 3, and we would have 5, excuse me, 5 fifteens remaining. 3 and 5 fifteens, which is equal to 3 and 1 third. So 5 thirds is equal to, well, how many 3s can we get out of 5? We get one and it's two remaining to what? Two thirds. So yes, this would be true as well. And if we needed to see this, we say four times 10 equals 40. 40 over five, 40 divided by five. We skip count by five to 40. We know that that would be eight. So we know that this is true as well. Now on the opposite side for B, if you notice, we went from gr three greater than signs to three less than signs. So we need a fraction where all of our fractions are, excuse me, we need a factor where all of our fractions are less than a whole. In this case, we're gonna say, let's just go with one half. Make it simple. So one half of three, excuse me, one half of two thirds should be less than two thirds. We know that because one whole of two thirds would be two thirds. So anything, if you multiply by a fraction that's less than one, you want to get a number that's less than your original factor. And in this case, we're going to do the same thing. Four times one half or half of four is two. We know that two is less than four. So that checks out. Then we have 5 thirds times 1 half. We're going to write it out. 5 times 1 is 5. 3 times 2 is 6. We know that this fraction here, 5, 6, is less than 1, whereas this fraction here, 5 thirds, is greater than 1. So therefore, 5 thirds is greater than, or we can write it the way that we have here, 5 6 is less than 5 thirds. So that checks out. All right, looking at the next problem, it says write a number in the blank that will make the number sentence true. So 3 times what is less than 1? So you have to come up with something that when you multiply it by 3 is less than 1. And we know that 3 times 1 hundredth is less than 1. Because we have 3 times 1 hundredth is going to be 3. 3 times 1 hundredth is going to be equal to 3 hundredths. Three hundredths is three in the hundredths place, which is less than one whole. 
Explain how multiplying by a whole number can result in a product less than one. So how multiplying by a whole number. In general, when you're multiplying a fraction less than one, it's, you're going to get a smaller number. So if the goal is to get a product less than one, then the fraction can be a unit fraction with a denominator that's larger than the number being multiplied. Uh, it's that simple. So if you look at part A, the denominator is bigger than the 3. Uh, so any denominator that's bigger than that 3 is going to work. All right. And it says, in a sketch, you have a fountain is drawn four, excuse me, a fountain is drawn one-fourth yards tall. The actual fountain will be 68 times as tall. How tall will the fountain be? So we know that it's one-fourth of one-fourth yards times the 68. It's going to be 68 times as tall. So times as tall means that we're going to multiply it. So now we have one-fourth times 68, which is equal to, you can rewrite that as one-fourth times 68. And we say, well, I know that that's equal to 68 fourths of a yard. And these are all of a yard, which we keep our measurement unit. So now we're going to say, well, 68 divided by 4. How many times is 4 going to 6? Or 6 divided by 4? 1. 4 times 1. 4. 6 minus 4. 2. Bring down our 8. How many times does 4 go into 28? 7. 7 times 4 is 28. We know that our answer is 17 yards. So the actual fountain will be 17 yards tall. All right. Hopefully this helps. Uh, this is about a 20 minute video. Stop and look over your answers. Pause the video if you need to. And let's make sure that we have everything we need to be successful. Thank you.